In this video, we're going to be talking about gene expression. So in order to express a gene, you're going to start off with a process called transcription, where you're taking your DNA within your nucleus, and with a collection of enzymes, uh, you're going to create this uh, temporary transcript of the code of DNA and send that out into the nucleus. That temporary transcript is called mRNA. Then that mRNA is going to be picked up by a ribosome somewhere in the cytoplasm or uh, lodged into your rough endoplasmic reticulum. And what that's going to do is that's going to convert the mRNA, or it's going to translate that R mRNA into something called uh, proteins, which we've talked about. So originally, it was thought that one gene uh, made only one protein. Uh, but with recent advances, uh, we've discovered that one gene um, usually is going to code for uh, a protein subunit for something. A lot of our proteins in our, in our cells are actually composed of multiple subunits. Uh, so each transcript might not code for the entire gene, but simply a subunit of the of a protein, of the larger protein. And then we've also found that reverse transcription is a thing that can happen. That's where you're actually moving from RNA into DNA, and that process is reverse transcription. This is something that we would observe in uh, the HIV virus. All right, so to start off um, with gene expression, remember we're gonna start off within the nucleus. We have this process called transcription, which is happening in the nucleus. And that process involves nucleic acid, or your DNA, being transcribed into a different type of nucleic acid, or RNA, or mRNA, to be more specific. Because there's a few different types of RNA that have different uses. Uh, mRNA is what we're talking about here. So in the nucleus, you're going from DNA to mRNA through the process of transcription. Then after that, that mRNA is sent out into the cytoplasm of the cell, um, and the nucleic acid, or that mRNA, is then translated into an amino acid sequence, or an amino acid chain, called proteins. Let me grab my laser pointer. All right. Yeah, so you're moving from RNA, or mRNA, into protein. Now, if we're dealing with uh, eukaryotic cells, there is actually a uh, transition step between your <clears throat> transcription and translation, and that is uh, splicing that happens to this mRNA. So it, it gets spliced, or it you could say it gets modified before being sent out uh, of the nucleus into the cytoplasm. And we'll talk about that later. All right, so as we've talked about before, your DNA is going to consist of adenine, thymine, cytosine, guanine. Uh, adenine binds to thymine uh, in the center of your DNA double helix, and cytosine binds to guanine uh, through hydrogen bonds. Now, when we make RNA, RNA is going to be very similar structurally to DNA, or similar chemically to DNA. Uh, however, it is going to have a different, one of the nucleotides is actually going to be different. So in DNA, we have A, T, C, G, whereas in RNA, instead of T, so this is, this is actually just showing the binding. So A would normally bind to T, you know, if this was DNA, T would bind to A, C would bind to G, G would bind to C. Now, if we're talking about a complementary RNA strand that's bound to DNA, uh, A would bind to U in RNA. So RNA, instead of T, has U for uracil. So very structurally similar to thymine. However, it is different, so, we have, so it has a different name. So RNA has uracil, adenine, guanine, and cytosine. All right. So now let's talk about transcription. We're going to deep dive into transcription. So remember, this is going to happen inside of the nucleus, and it's going to start off with a process called initiation. So during initiation, what happens is your RNA polymerase, so A's being an enzyme, polymer, 
polymer, meaning it's making a polymer of something. What is it making a polymer of? RNA. So RNA polymerase comes along. It's an enzyme that it attaches to one strand of the DNA at what we call a promoter sequence. So it's a series of T's and A's. It's, some, some people call it the ta-ta box. Um, it's going to bind to the promoter sequence. So this is important to remember, the promoter sequence is associated with transcription. So RNA polymerase binds to a promoter sequence and takes part in the unwinding of DNA. So your promoter sequence is gonna be found at the start of many of your genes. Um, and it would make sense if you want to transcribe something from start to finish, it would make sense that your RNA polymerase, the thing that's going to aid in the process of transcribing the gene, um, you want it to bind to the beginning of the gene. And the beginning of the gene, uh, you're gonna have a tata -ta box or a promoter sequence. All right, so RNA polymerase binds to the promoter sequence and begins unwinding the DNA. So that's the initiation, that's the first step of transcription. Next, we have elongation. So RNA nucleotides, so within our nucleus, we have a bunch of free nucleotides just kind of floating around. And so these little subunits, these little Lego building blocks of, of various types, or actually you could say of, you know, the five different types of nucleotides we've talked about so far, um, they're, they're floating around. And when the appropriate nucleotide, the appropriate counterpart nucleotide for the DNA or the complementary nucleotide, um, makes contact, or you could say when your RNA polymerase makes contact with a T, for example, on the DNA. Well, it, it sits and waits around for a adenine that's floating around inside of the nucleus to come and bind. So RNA nucleotides begin to pair up with the complementary DNA strand that it's using as a template to write this mRNA. So RNA nucleotides start pairing with the DNA strand, so they're, they're complementing the DNA strand, and it's gonna start at the five prime end of RNA, and it's gonna write it in the three prime direction. And we've already talked about the difference between five prime and three prime. So what it's gonna do is it's going to make messenger RNA, or that mRNA that we talked about earlier. So you start off with the five prime um, end of your mRNA, and you write in the three prime direction. Remember, your, your free nucleotides are just coming and just binding to the complementary strand of DNA here. All right, so that's elongation. That's, you could say, the second step of transcription. Next, we have termination. And this is where your RNA polymerase is going to reach an end sequence. So your, each gene is going to have a beginning. It's going to have an end. What's going to happen is your RNA polymerase binds to the promoter sequence and it transcribes all the way until it meets the end sequence. So this end sequence signals for your RNA polymerase to disband from the um, DNA. And what we're left with is a strand of mRNA. <clears throat> and in eukaryotes, we would call this pre-mRNA. <clears throat> so pre-mRNA um, is what we're going to be left with in eukaryotes. In prokaryotes, there's no, there's no modification of this mRNA. But in, in eukaryotes, we're actually going to modify this. So in eukaryotes, what happens is when we create this pre-mRNA, it's going to be composed of introns and exons. So introns are going to be, you could say, stuff that uh, we would want to sp cut out of our mRNA. Exons are going to be things that we want to keep within that mRNA in order to be sent outside of the nucleus and in order to be transcribed by or translated by a ribosome. So the introns are cut out, they stay within the nucleus, and the exons are kept on the mRNA, and they're actually sent out. So exons are, are what exit, you could say what exit, the nucleus. So pre-mRNA pre is going to have both exons and introns. And the thing that's going to be conducting this process of, you know, splicing together your exons is the spliceosome. 
So what it's going to do is it's going to cut out the introns and it's going to leave the exons. It's going to splice those exons together. So exon is going to be spliced together with another exon and then you're left with mature mRNA. So what we've done is we've created a mature messenger RNA transcript, which we're going to send outside of the nucleus and into the cytoplasm. And when it's in the cytoplasm, it's going to get picked up by a ribosome, which is going to then uh, read that mRNA in the form of codons. So what a codon is, is a triplet of nucleotides. So we're going to convert from the language of nucleotides the language of nucleotides here to the language of amino acids here. So each of these um, little triplets of letters, so this would be threonine, this would be alanine, proline, these are all different types of amino acids, uh, glutamine, glycine, and so on. And everything on the left, the left side of these boxes, that's going to be the codons, or you could say the words that our mRNA would be carrying. So UUU is going to code for uh, phenylalanine by the ribosome. So we are translating one language, the language of nucleotides, to the language of amino acids. And so all of your proteins that you will make is always going to start with AUG. So AUG, where's AUG here? right here, AUG. That's going to be your start codon. So all of your proteins are always going to start with the amino acid methionine.